Today, we're talking about the Phoenix and answering your questions. If you don't know what the Phoenix is, it's like the Easy Bake Oven for concrete. It tells you the water to cement ratio. Yeah, I explain it all in this video. It's amazing, it's off, awesome. Check the link above in the video. I give you basically the who, what, where, why, and how all of the basics of the Phoenix, and you can find a bunch more information on these two websites, so you should go check them out there. But I was blown away, I was Ford because you guys, I love my freaks out there, asked me 60 different questions about the Phoenix, so that's pretty cool when you get that much engagement. I answered some of them, and some of them I promised a bunch more longer answers in this video, so let's buckle up, suckers, let's make this happen. The first question was, can the Phoenix predict the strength of concrete or wouldn't it be cool if the Phoenix could predict the strength of concrete? And I'm gonna show you how that can actually happen today. And let's start out with, well, what in the world in a concrete mixture impacts the strength of that concrete mixture? Well, I'm showing you on this slide every single ingredient that's typically in a concrete mixture, and believe it or not, every single one of them has the ability to impact the strength of your concrete. However, if you look on a day-to-day -day basis, so let's say I gather up a given mix design, what changes on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, not the cement, not the SCM, not the rock, not the sand, all of those are pretty much fixed. There's some fine adjustments, but they're all pretty close, but the air content and the water content, that can change and that can change drastically and that can make it hard to predict what the strength is. But can we measure these two parameters that change? Can we measure the air content and the water content? Ha <laughs> ha, of course we can. If the air content, you wanna measure it, this is the super air meter. You could use a normal air meter though and people could use that to measure the air content of the concrete. And you can use the Phoenix, this sweet kiln or oven that pulls all the water out of the concrete and that helps you measure the water, of course, in the concrete. And there we are taking a sample in and out. That's how this sweet kiln works. But what does this mean? What am I talking about? Well, we need to, for a given mixture, I will actually know the strength if I can measure my air and water in a concrete mixture. And I'll explain what I'm talking about. It's kind of the concept called a three-point curve. If you've never heard of a three-point curve, it's actually really poorly named. It uses way more than three points, typically. It's pretty much how air and water-cement ratio impact strength. So I would call it the air water cement ratio curve or something like that, or the strength master curve possibly, but yeah, it looks like this. On the x-axis, I'm plotting the air content. On the y-axis, I'm plotting the strength. And all of these different lines are the same concrete mixture. Same rock, sand, cement, and water, but they have different amounts of water to cement ratio. So we can see the ones down here at the bottom have a higher water to cement ratio and then they have a lower strength. And the ones at the top up here have a lower water to cement ratio and therefore they have themselves a higher strength. So there you go, high water to cement ratio at the bottom, low water to cement ratio at the top and notice all of the lines have the same slope. See that slope right there? That's pretty cool. That means they're all the same materials. Those slopes are super duper important. So how much does the air and water really change the strength of a concrete mixture? Well, for every about 1% air, at least with the materials that I just showed you, it changed the strength by about 400 PSI or 2.8 megapascals. But for every 0.01 water to cement ratio change, it changed it by about 200 PSI or about 1.4 megapascals. So can the Phoenix predict the strength of the concrete? Well, kinda, it can contribute to it. For example, if I have a three-point curve from my mix design, that means if I put that together when I was making my mix, and if I have the air content of my concrete mixture in question, if I have my water content of my concrete in question, and if I give it some time and make sure it's hot enough, not like frozen forever, right? It's got some heat to that mixture, then the strength will come. That means I can predict what my compressive strength is. Yep, gonna get that right. I can get flexural strength. Yep, no problem. If you're a cuber out there, you break concrete cubes, not a problem. We got that covered as well. We can get elastic modulus. We can get creep. We can get freeze thaw performance. We can get other durability parameters. Holy cow! 
That's amazing, right? That's the power of what this tool can give you. But now why in the world will my water ever be off? My buddy Shane asked that question. Thanks, Shane, for that, for that one. Teed me up nicely, brother. There's all kinds of reasons. One times you can have an incorrect moisture content, right? Unless they're using the right sensors out there, right? Um, sometimes there's batch plant tolerances that are off a little bit. Sometimes the wrong amount of water just happens to be added to the mixture. It happens sometimes. And then there's renegade water. What? You never heard of renegade water? Like, come on now, what is renegade water? Well, actually, if you look it up, it's like water from a renegade, right? And that is my favorite renegade right there. Oklahoma's finest, Pistol Pete, mascot of my Oklahoma State University Cowboys. Yeah, go Pistol Pete. But seriously, renegade water, that's just water that's not recorded on the batch ticket. That's just water that finds its way into the mixture. Like maybe at the wash down rack or Maybe somebody adds it at the job site because like, why not add 10 gallons, right boys? And so how much extra water really matters out there? Well, if you have an eight cubic yard mixture and it is about a six sack mix, then a five gallon addition or 20 liters or so is a 0.01 water cement ratio change. That's 200 PSI, 1.4 megapascals or about one year of life at least in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, if you're worried about corrosion. Yeah, you are degrading the life of the concrete as you add water to it, as well as degrading the strength. So are there any other ways out there to measure water? Well, yeah, there's one called the Ashto T318 or the microwave oven test. Microwave, isn't that used to like heat up burritos? Well, yeah, and when you're done doing that, you can take it out and use it to measure the water in your concrete, at least people try. So what happened was many, many years ago, probably about six years ago, a gentleman named Jagan Gudimatilla, great, great guy. He is a contractor that works for the FHWA. He is on the Mobile Concrete Lab. If you ever get a chance to go see the Mobile Concrete Lab, it is amazing. You gotta make sure you go check it out. But Joe talked to Jagan. Jagan came to me and said, Tyler, there's something here with this microwave oven test, but it's off a little bit. We did the whole thing, of course in Stillwater, Oklahoma style over cheese fries at Eskimo Joe's. But I said, Jogging, yeah, brother, I like that idea, but I wasn't sure. After a while, we worked on it with the great Brett Robertson, and now we've got ourselves the Phoenix. So how does this microwave oven test work, though? Well, it collects, you first start out with 1,500 grams of concrete. Then you, that is actually about a third of a four by eight cylinder. If you want to see that with your eyes, it's something like this. Yeah. That is how much, about a third of a four by eight cylinder is what's used in the test, and that's actually one of the big weaknesses of the test. This test was a great inspiration for us at Oklahoma State. But you start out with that wet concrete, and you weigh the sample in this fiberglass bag on a Pyrex dish, and then you put it in the microwave and you heat it up, and then you take it out and you weigh it, and then you open up the bag and you like beat the snot out of it because you gotta break apart the particles. You put it back together, and then you put it in the microwave, and then you heat it up, you weigh it, and then you break it up. I mean, you can kind of see this just goes on and on and on. Yeah, like this graph shows, here is time on the x-axis, every one of these dots is where you had to open it up and break it up per, as per the test method. And this is the change in mass over here, right? That's a lot of breaking it up. That's a lot of time. It takes about 40 minutes at least to measure this sample. Um, so you find the water content after all that, you compare that to the cementitious content in the mixture and you determine the water to cement ratio. So why in the world is this not used? Well, number one, it's extremely labor intensive. Number Number two, because the small sa the sample is so small, this results are pretty variable, actually about plus or minus 0.05 water to cement ratio. And here's some data. Now I'm showing the bashed water to cement ratio down here. This is what is supposed to be in the mix. Here is the measured water to cement ratio. This is all laboratory mixtures. This would be perfect agreement. And look at the Phoenix, this is all Phoenix data. Really, 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 really close to that perfect agreement and then that yeah, that's the microwave. Not very close and pretty variable. Yeah, the microwave. So how in the world 
would I specify the Phoenix if I wanted to? Believe it or not, there is a Minnesota DOT test method that's out there. I will um, leave a link and I'll show it to you how you can get it. And we're talking with ASTM now to see if they're interested in the Phoenix. And you can find more information about some Phoenix papers and the test methods at this link here. And pretty much, ladies and gentlemen, we're at a new paradigm in the world of concrete. And we need to really ask for better concrete. And then once we ask for better concrete and really keep asking for better concrete, the people that are willing to bring it to us, we must reward them. We must give them work, give them jobs, give them praise, give them whatever we can so we can reinforce this. But it starts out with you asking for better concrete. If you don't ask for better concrete, they're not going to give it to you. You need to ask for it. So please look into using the Phoenix on your projects. I use it in my lab constantly. Like It is a game changer. It is unbelievable. People are using it and having great success with it in the field. And so tell someone about the Phoenix. If you're not going to get it or use it or whatever, that's cool. Tell somebody that you think would be interested. You know somebody out there that's crazy enough to try the Phoenix. Let them know. This is pretty game-changing, pretty awesome tech. tech. So where can you find out more? Again, there are these two websites where you can learn more about the Phoenix. So my friends, please like this video, subscribe to this channel, leave me a comment below, and of course, check me out at Instagram and Facebook. Thank you so much, my concrete maniacs. Peace!